Hi, Maya. <laughs> Are you ready? All right. Oh. Huh. Help. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs>Hi, my name is Krista Van Allen, and I'm going to share a little bit of my story. Pretty early on in my journey, I had decided that I wanted to not have sex before marriage. It meant a lot to me, and I didn't realize that that was a wildly lofty goal. I didn't realize how much opposition I would come under in every single relationship, basically. And so what I found was in high school, especially after you date someone for a long time, um, the night of junior prom, I was given an ultimatum by my boyfriend at the time. And it was either, you know, we're done, or you just kind of throw your conviction out the window. And that caught me by surprise because I felt like this is a guy who cares about me, he knows me, and I think one of the things was he actually didn't know why I held that conviction. And if I were to be honest, I don't think I knew why either. Um, so it didn't take long before I was completely swayed and gave in. And what I found was when I finally told my friends about it, one friend in particular, it was in the bathroom at high school, she congratulated me and she was like, oh my God, you slut. And I felt so, like, horrible. <laughs> um, wow. So, <laughs> that was never my plan. And I can come from the perspective now of, the adult perspective now of like, what I wish I would have known and I think what I wish I would have known is that you have to own your actions either way. Like, you're either going to be the prude girl or the slut after, so it's kind of a lot of distance in between there. Um, but her saying that, it was almost like this new name tag that I had. and. I don't think I believed it, but I didn't know how to be anything other than that, I guess. And um, it planted this seed that I could no longer be pure in any way. And also planted the seed that like, guys aren't gonna date you if you don't just do what they want. And so those two beliefs led me down a path that I wish I could undo, <laughs> but I'm glad I learned from it. I'm just gonna say that I'm glad I'm not a teenager in 2017 because I encountered some crazy stuff um, when I was in high school and you guys have it so much weirder and so much worse and it, I, I get you. Like I understand what it's like to be asked for photos and I understand what it's like to be pressured into weird situations. Um, I know that it's hard. Like I know that it feels scary to draw a line in the sand. Um, draw a line in the sand, straight up. Like not in the sand, draw it like in cement and then don't cross it because there will always be, there will always be a guy who's gonna ask you for something. And um, then there will be guys who won't, believe it or not. Like there really, really are guys who won't and you might say no to something and you might lose a relationship and a boy might break up with you and a boy might call you prude and a boy might do whatever he does. That's fine. Like, that's better than just saying, here I am, like, take what you want, because what that does is it destroys um, this part of you that we don't know how to give a tangible, like, title to. And we can't just 
it's hard to give it a name because what it is is your dignity if I had to give it a name um, it's your self-respect it's your value it's it's you like it's what you hold dear to you whether you know it or not and you're like here you go sure show your friends like what no absolutely not so say no it's fine you'll be out of high school in maximum four years okay like <laughs> the world opens up after this place it just does and then you'll have a college guy ask you for something so practice right now who you're gonna be and what you're gonna say and how you're gonna hold a conviction because it will happen over and over and over again and I wish that it didn't but um, you actually have the freedom to be a woman that you can respect like you are allowed to respect you even if the guys around you don't understand that I'm as passionate about this as I am because I know where I've been and I know where I am now and the relationship that I'm in now it doesn't even it's not the same color as it the ones in the past it's not the same shape it's not the same texture like nothing about it is the same and there are some pretty primary differences that have absolutely changed my life with this particular relationship I think women underestimate um, the power of a respectable man in the sense that when you deeply deeply respect the heart and the character of who you're with life is just different and so the first probably year and a half of my relationship with Mr. John DeYoung um, <laughs> Unfortunately, he had a lot of un undoing to do of my past preconceived notions about relationships and guys, and he was so gracious to just walk through that with me and help redefine like, whoa, where you've been is not normal and that's not healthy and that wasn't a representation of like safe love in any way. and. He was just patient through the process, and I'm like, who's this guy? And never one time, like not one time, was he invasive of my space, my personal space. And in fact, he recognized that that was like, <laughs> um, he recognized that that was a wounded area and instead of like barging in he like nurtured it and um that helped a lot so he's redefined everything for me and i think the primary thing that has been shocking and amazing in a healthy relationship is that um, when you actually date a healthy guy and a man who knows the Lord and who will always elevate the Lord above your relationship, what I've noticed has changed in me and changed in my life is that I'm not living um, to like please him and I'm not living to make sure that every need of his is met and I'm not operating out of codependency whatsoever. Like I'm actually able to just be me and he encourages me to like flourish in these weird ways that I didn't even know were possible like hey you have a dream you should do that like you should pursue that how can I help you or um I have never been able to actually focus primarily on Christ in a relationship and secondarily on the relationship itself and he actually encourages that and um, just so supportive and so polite and willing to like talk through stuff and all of this rich cool depth that we've reached in our relationship is stuff that was never possible before number one because I wasn't dating guys who cared at all about anything beyond 
um, a life beyond right now and they didn't know the Lord and it just changes everything. It changes everything when you know that you're not the point and when a woman's role is not to just like meet your needs, it just changes things. And one thing that was a complete game changer for me, like absolute game changer, is um, the last serious relationship I was in before, before John, um, given my past, when he encountered me, he was like, you're, you're used goods. And he actually said that to me. And when I, when I met John and started dating him, he came from the perspective of, hey, when we both die and go to heaven, I hope that I'm there to watch the Lord like receive you and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And I wanna be on the side like cheering that I got to be part of that. And when he said that, it, I'm like, it's not even the same thing. Like guilt, shame, um, everything that I'd been through before was just completely washed away by like, I wanna be part of your well done, my good and faithful servant moment. Like that's a different kind of guy than the guy who's like, hey, send me a pic. <laughs> not, not even the same. <laughs>